Hello learners, Leon here. Welcome back to the channel where I try to make accounting and finance seem more interesting than it actually is. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, today we want to go in and analyze our first real estate investment trust. Now, before that, important disclaimer, super, super important. So pay attention. I will not, I vow that I will not buy any real estate investment trust, any share in any real estate investment trust until I've analyzed and looked at at least 10, okay? And I'm doing this because I'm biased and to, to protect myself from my own biases, I need to just set a steadfast rule that I'm gonna stick to. When I look at enough, and then I'll make a purchase, right? It's kind of like going to the supermarket like you want to buy pasta sauce or something. And you walk into a superstore, you're on the aisle, you don't just see pasta sauce and then pick it up and put it into your cart. I mean, maybe maybe some of you do if you're impulse buyers, but if you're a stock picker like me, then even when you're buying pasta sauce, you would go and look at the aisles and you would pick up each pasta sauce, right? Maybe one per hand, and you'd be looking at the nutrition labels, looking at the brands, um, trying not to fall prey to any marketing or packaging, which I always do fall prey to. You see, you're looking at the color of the sauce, you're, you're kind of smelling the lid a little, and you're seeing how heavy they are, and then you're trying to figure out how much they cost, and then finally afterwards you settle for the $2.95 uh, oregano flavored uh, pasta sauce, and then, and then you put the three fifty one back on the shelf, even though it's about uh, the same. The only difference is when you're buying a jar of pasta sauce, in general, you're spending between two to five dollars if you're super, super into that stuff. But in general, if you buy a stock, you're spending a couple thousand dollars. So you should probably spend more time picking and analyzing and looking at different stocks than you do browsing the store for pasta sauce. God, I'm hungry right now. All right, let's get back to the task at hand. We're going to look at Melcor REITs today, which is a real estate investment trust that's a subsidiary of Melcor Developments. And Melcor Developments is a development company that has projects across Western Canada. The company Melcor Developments itself was founded in 1923, which means the company has almost a hundred years of history. It's got some intriguing numbers. It has a market capitalization of $105 million, which effectively makes it a small cap stock. Currently, the company pays a 8.5 dividend yield at its current price um, on an operating cash flow of $10.5 million a year. At the same time, it's got a book value of $15 per share, but is only currently trading at $8 per share. That's a 0.52 price to book ratio, which says two things. Either the stock itself is underpriced or the assets that the real estate investment trust owns are underperforming assets that really aren't worth even their book value. The CEO of the company's name is Darren Rayburn, and he's been in the industry for over 20 years. In fact, the CEO of this REIT is also the CEO of Melcor Developments. Okay? And the REIT itself has its hand in residential, commercial, as well as industrial real estate, with a focus definitely on the residential and commercial side. With that, we can kind of call it a diversified real estate investment trust. Since becoming public in 2013, the company has never missed its monthly dividend. And I've been reading up on the news uh, around the company and as well as some of the things that the company is currently doing. And I think I have enough reason to believe that its management believes that the current share price on the market is under price that the stock right now for Melcor REITs is undervalued. Why do I say that? So the reason I bring this up is because recently Melcor Development decided to buy back the shares of Melcor REITs for a 1.5% premium on the market price of the share. And this 10 to 15 million dollars worth of shares 
will be used to finance uh, Melchor Reed's uh, acquisition of an other uh, real estate location in the Grand Prairies. Uh, that is a retail business location. The willingness of the parent company to pay a premium to market value of the shares to its subsidiary to finance a expansion project is indication that the REIT itself might be underpriced. In fact, the company CEO Darren Rayburn has publicly stated that he thinks the company value right now is underpriced on the market and in fact in the last quarter alone they have had a continued share buyback program and have purchased over three hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars worth of shares back not only that the company has also recently issued convertible debentures and what convertible debentures are are a type of debt that also gives you the option of changing the principal into actual shares of the company uh, at a later time when the debt is due um, at a certain price per share. So in essence, when the debt matures, the debt holders have the option to convert the principal into shares of the company at a certain strike price. So if I own convertible debentures, for example, uh, let's say I have $100 of convertible debentures that a company owes me, uh, and the exercise price of that is $10. After all the interest is paid um, at the maturity date when the company has to pay back uh, their debt, I have the option of taking cash from the company or turning my principal into shares of the company depending on the exercise price decided beforehand. And what's interesting about this is the exercise price of the convertible debentures that was just passed in the last month by the company over 46 million dollars worth of convertible ventures guess what their exercise price is their exercise price is eight dollars and ninety cents and the debt matures in the year 2024 which means by then uh, investors and debt holders believe that by then the company per share would at least be worth $8.90 and right now it's trading for $8. So all of this comes together to paint a pretty convincing picture that I should probably take a look at its financial statements at a later time to see if it's actually a worthwhile investment and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So if you enjoyed and you want to continue learning about how REITs work, here's what you want to do. You want to hit the bell icon. You want to hit the bell icon, subscribe and like the video so more people can see it. And when the next video comes out, you want to watch it right away so you don't miss a possible buying opportunity. Or you could be like me and wait until you analyze 10 uh, REITs with me before you make a decision to purchase. Regardless, I hope this helped you and you learned something from this video, whether it's just one thing or the fact that I like Tim Tams or, or, or pasta sauce. Whatever you learn, I hope that I can see you again in the future. Well, I guess you'd be seeing me in the future because I'm just, I'm looking at a camera right now. But anyways, bye. <laughs>